Warning! Today's episode is going to be a bloody affair, because we are going to look at my blood under the microscope. So if you can't see blood, you might want to skip this microscopic adventure. No, seriously, you're about to see a tiny bit of my blood. So if you really can't see any, you should stop the video now. Still with me? Okay, but don't say I didn't warn you. So for this episode, I sacrificed myself quite heroically and pricked myself with one of those little needles that diabetics usually use to test their blood sugar. I then put the drop of my blood on a slide, as you can see here. Now let's take a look at it under the microscope. At first glance, this billowing mess looks like an image of white noise. The two large white areas are air bubbles that have been trapped under the cover glass. If you pay attention to the edges of the air bubbles, you can spot the movement of many small particles. Under a higher magnification, you can now observe the countless particles even more closely. All these small, round discs are red blood cells, also called erythrocytes. Erythrocytes have a biconcave disc shape, so they appear slightly paler in the center than at the edge. The shape makes them flexible, allowing them to be deformable, so that they can enter and move through even the smallest blood vessels. Red blood cells are formed in the bone marrow and circulate through our body for an average of 120 days until they get removed and replaced with new ones. Their main task is the transport of oxygen. The oxygen is bound to the iron-containing pigment hemoglobin, which makes up 90% of a red blood cell. They get oxygen from the lungs, supply your muscles and organs with it, and in return carry carbon dioxide back to the lungs, where you exhale it. This entire process is also called gas exchange. Sometimes red blood cells, like this one, get a bumpy cell membrane. These cells are then called echinocytes or Burr cells. The changed shape comes from the fact that the cell content shrinks, which means that water is flowing out of the cell. In my case, it looks like this because the blood is slowly starting to dry out on the slide. So nothing to worry about. When the blood stops flowing and gradually becomes more viscous, you can sometimes observe how the individual red blood cells start to stack up. They then look like rolls of coins or like those gummy candies from Haribo called roulette. These stacks of red blood cells are also called rouleau, and this formation is usually reversible, meaning that when the blood becomes thinner again, they would no longer stick together. The fact that red blood cells can stack in this way is important because they play a stabilizing role in wound closure. However, blood does not only consist of red blood cells. These cells are platelets, also called thrombocytes. They are the smallest cells in our blood and play an important role in blood clotting. When the blood vessel is injured, these platelets attach themselves to the surrounding tissue to close the injury. So if you have too few platelets in your blood, you should expect an increased tendency to bleed. For example, spontaneous nosebleeds may occur. If you have too many of them, the risk of arterial thrombosis is higher. In a thrombosis, many of these platelets stick together and form a blood clot, called a thrombus, blocking veins or arteries. 
This can be life-threatening because the blood flow and thus the transport of oxygen to the cells is disrupted. These large and rather whitish looking cells are the stars when it comes to keeping you healthy. This is a white blood cell, also called a leukocyte. Leukocytes make up 1% of the blood in your body. They are much rarer than the red blood cells, which make up approximately 45% of the blood. Leukocytes can be divided into three groups. There are the granulocytes, like the neutrophils. They fight parasites, bacteria, fungi and are involved in allergic inflammatory reactions. Then there are the monocytes. They are the largest cells in your blood. When they move from the bloodstream into the tissues, they are called macrophages. These eating machines can engulf potential pathogens. To do this, the macrophage surrounds the unwanted pathogen, sucks it in and then destroys it. This process is also called phagocytosis. And then there are the lymphocytes. They help the body's immune system fight cancer, bacteria and unknown viruses. Some lymphocytes are also called memory cells because they are able to recognize a particular antigen that they have encountered before. Therefore, the immune system can respond to them faster and stronger. If you have too many white blood cells in your blood, it can be due to various reasons. For example, it may indicate a bacterial infection, too much stress, or even leukemia. Certain autoimmune diseases, such as lupus, can be the cause of a low white blood cell count. But also viral infections or a severe vitamin B12 deficiency can cause you to have too few leukocytes in your blood. Oh, and just a friendly reminder at this point. Don't forget to get your regular blood work done. And we are done for today. As always, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you want to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I'm also on Instagram if you want to follow me there too. Have a great day and see you hopefully next time.